Yesterday, my town, my district, my community became the latest victim of a mass shooting. This sad American phenomenon made its way to Boulder, Colorado. <clears throat> seven days, seven mass shootings, the seventh day in my town. Ten people lost their lives yesterday, including Eric Talley, Officer Eric Talley, a, a policeman who ran in to face the fire. I want to read you the names of the other people who died yesterday. And you'll have to forgive me because I just found out that I actually do know one of them. And I don't know if I know how to pronounce all of their names, but Denny Strong, 20 years old. Nevin Stavinsky, 23. Ricky Odds, 25. Chelona Bakanaviak, 49. Suzanne Fountain, 59. Terry Liker, 51. Kevin Mahoney, 61. Lynn Murray, 62, same as me. Judy Jody Waters, 65. I know her from a store on the Pearl Street Mall where I shop, and um, she's gone now. I am so sad for them and for their families, and also for the employees of King Supers who put their lives on the line every day during this pandemic, only to have, when the light was at the end of the tunnel, to have this happen. We are going to have another moment of silence at the end of the speakers today. But I don't want to lead that, because I don't want to be silent. The victims won't hear our silence. We have to speak with our actions. We have to make it easier to get mental health services than it is to get a gun. We have to address our culture of violence. We have to be loud, not silent. If we want to help our law enforcement agencies, we have to protect them. We can't keep putting them in harm's way. So I urge all of us to think about what, what can we be doing, what should we do, and how can we come together and do it? Because otherwise, we'll be back here next week having another moment of silence. Thank you. Representative McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I apologize. I'm very raw about this. And I think that I'm raw because it just keeps happening, and my heart doesn't have time to heal in between. Grocery stores, spas, healthcare clinics, bowling alleys, shopping malls, parties, breweries, naval air stations, football watch parties, high schools, interstates, nightclubs, Walmarts, festivals, workplaces, universities, synagogues, banks, hospitals, yoga studios, newspaper headquarters, waffle houses, veterans' homes, churches, music festivals, libraries, baseball games, nursing homes, elementary schools, airports. I have to stop. I could go on. That's just in the last 36 months. Our people, your people, do not feel safe. I, I need to rephrase that. It's not that we don't feel safe. We're not safe. It's feeling safe is an illusion. Being safe is something we can do something about. Yesterday, we stood here. We all stood in deep gratitude to the men and women who represented our country at war during the Vietnam War, and my dad was one of those people. 
We're alive here today. If he were alive here today, he would ask us, why aren't we standing up to defend and protect our own citizens on our own soil? We are failing members. We need to work to make being safe more of a reality. As it is, we are all losing our ability to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, one shooting after another. What are we going to do to protect and defend our citizens right here? We're not doing enough. How much courage is it going to take for us to defend our way of life and our peace here on our American soil? Representative Burnett. Ten lives were taken from us yesterday. That's ten empty place settings at the Thanksgiving table. Ten families without the funny sibling, the witty uncle, or the generous daughter. Ten funerals. Ten Coloradans gunned down by the most banal and commonplace settings, the neighborhood grocery store. My friends shop there. I have shopped there. Even in beautiful little Boulder, Colorado, gun violence shatters lives and leaves the rest of us shaken. My heart goes out to the families and friends of the victims of this unspeakable tragedy, including Officer Eric Talley, his wife, and their seven children. It's hard to believe, hard to understand, and definitely hard to come to terms with. But sadly, yesterday's press events are not without precedent. They come as the latest harrowing episode in a history of mass shootings that have torn far, far too many Colorado families apart. Columbine High School, Aurora Theater, Highlands Ranch STEM School, and now Boulder King Supers. Remember, we remember the names of the places, but as our representative Sullivan has reminded us in the past, we move on far too quickly and leave the families of the victims to deal with the pain of their loss of their own. Long after the national TV cameras are gone, after the headlines fade, after yesterday's events are relegated to history, this pain will persist in Boulder. I hope this body can honor the victims not only with our silence, our thoughts, and our prayers, but with our action. Unlike other Coloradans who mourn with us today, we have the power and the means to change the status quo. Representative Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Every morning when I get ready to leave the house, I reach in the closet. I grab Alex's jacket, wear that in with me. Because I, I hope that that keeps me grounded, that keeps me, that gives me a calming effect. And I also hope that during the course of, of my day that someone else, you know, will notice it and they'll see this is, this is what gun violence looks like. This is a survivor and a victim of a mass shooting, and, and this is, is what it looks like. Some days, um, when I know the days are going to be really rough, I wear it on inside because I need his strength. I need to feel him holding me and telling me dead. You can get through this. So that's why I'm wearing it today. I know in a while we're going to have a moment of silence. And, and people say that, you know, sometimes they think that, you know, we've gone kind of numb to, to this. And I, I don't think that's true at all. I just think we've gotten good at it. We, we have a lot of practice we just practiced a moment of silence last week. We're going to do it again today. When I 
spend my moment of silence, I, I can remember where we were, and I know where these nine and 10 families are at today. I, I know what those calls were like yesterday. I, I know exactly what it was like when they had to huddle over at the, the CU Event Center, because that, that was our Gateway High School. That was Newtown's firehouse. That was where they went. That's where you hoped when you walked in the door that your loved one was there, that you could get a hold of. But there was nine, 10 families that kept walking to the back of the event center looking and not, and not finding anybody. So I think about them during my moment of silence. I hope that they have the strength to get through what is gonna be just an incredibly difficult time. All of a sudden, your, your brother, sister, your mom and dad, all of a sudden their, their names are gonna be read off. Their pictures are gonna be in the paper. Someone's gonna ask you what they were like. Those people are gonna do the same thing that I did this morning. They're gonna start looking through their closets and their drawers and looking for something that they can hold on to because they had no idea that sending somebody to the grocery store was gonna end up the way that it did. I just remind all of you that you're affected. You are a victim and a survivor of this crisis that we live in that continues to affect the people here within the state of Colorado. Please take care of yourself. Reach out to those that you know and trust and care about, because they're the ones who understand you. Be careful of what you hear and what others will say. Trust those that, that you know. And we'll just keep trying to get through the day. Thank you. Representative Hooten. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, members yesterday, my beloved Boulder was traumatized in a way that this has never occurred in her community. We are a peaceful community outside of shenanigans from CU students sometimes. <laughs> and I honestly, right? And King Super is where those students shop. This is traumatizing what has happened to us. And I have gone through deep sadness for the victims and their families, which Tom can speak about more eloquently and passionately than anyone else. But you think about those families and the ripple effect it has in our community. And the perpetrator was another kid, you know, a 20-year-old boy, young man, from a community outside of Boulder. And we have often felt, especially in the last few years, like it's going to be a matter, not a matter of if, but a matter of when. At some point, this was going to happen in Boulder, and it feels very personal. It feels very personal. And I just want to be in this moment today because there's too much information we don't have, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. I know every single person in this room feels deeply for the Boulder community and that your feelings are sincere, and I appreciate that. You don't even have to reach out to me. But what we need in these times is to reach out to each other because what happens to Boulder happens to Colorado. I mean, Littleton has gone through this. I mean, so many communities are affected. Look at 
the aides up in the gallery, they're all, they all know Boulder. We all know Boulder. And Boulder is just another Colorado community that has suffered profoundly yesterday and today. And that trauma is going to be with us for a long time, for a long time. But just for today, I want to thank you for standing in solidarity with the Boulder Caucus, with Tom Sullivan, and with each other. Thank you. Representative Judah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On March 15th, the Muslim community mourned the two-year anniversary of the terror attack killing 50 people in New Zealand. And Colorado flocked to my mosque in Aurora to stand in solidarity, offer their thoughts and prayers. Last week on Sunday, I stood with our AAPI community and mourned their terror attack. And we find ourselves here again, standing with our brothers and sisters from Boulder, mourning their terror attack. The Muslim community is no stranger to terror, to being the victims of terror and gun violence. But there's also a double whammy for me, is that as a member of the Aurora delegation, the Aurora delegation is also no stranger to terror attacks from gun violence. So from the Aurora delegation to my Boulder delegation, from the Muslim community, I want to tell you that we stand in solidarity, but more than offering thoughts and prayers, which I will tell you, sound nice, but do nothing. The Muslim community, the Aurora delegation, offers action. And I can personally say that I will vow to stand in action with you while silently praying for your community. Representative Larson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, listening here today, I can only imagine what it was like 22 years ago when my community down in Littleton uh, suffered the Columbine 2 shooting. And I can imagine that's the same pain that representatives from Boulder are feeling today. Um, that was a very impactful moment in my life and everyone in my community that still lives on. I went to the 20 year reunion of the Columbine massacre shortly after getting elected last term. And I can tell you that the pain changes, but it never goes away. Uh, and you're, I, I, there's just nothing else like it to describe. Um, I just wanna let everyone know that the people of Littleton, Colorado are with you today. We've been through it, and it, it changes your community forever. But our, our deepest sympathies, to, and everyone in my community knows what you guys are going through, and we're with you, and we have nothing but empathy and love in our hearts for you. And I'm so sorry that we have to be here today. Representative Herod. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be brief. Um, I just wanted to stand in solidarity with the Boulder de delegation as a CU alum, someone who was just there this weekend. Boulder is a place of hope, it's a place of freedom and learning, and it's always felt so safe to me. It's always felt like this, like, Mecca, you know? And I think that's why so many parents feel so safe and confident sending their kids there. You know, that's the grocery store that I shopped at. I never felt like anything like this could happen. So 
we'll have longer conversations about what we need to do, about how we want to use our power to act. But that's not what today is about. Today is about standing in solidarity and in alignment that the senseless killings, murders, must end. We might have different solutions in our minds, but I think we hold that in our hearts, all of us. We love you all in Boulder. We love all of the buffs who might be standing here in the gallery or standing with us. We stand in deep solidarity with you, shoulder to shoulder. We'll get through this. Representative Fultorf. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, esteemed colleagues. This is truly a sad day for Colorado and a sad day for all of us because of the loss we've had. But I want to speak to a different loss that happened in my community. A young boy in my home community, Washington County, a young boy that my daughter Jackie taught as a teacher's assistant last year when she was a senior and he was in sixth grade. A young boy who spirit was so depressed, who had lost hope in everything and everybody in this world of this world, decided to take his life early this morning. A young boy that I knew <clears throat> when I spoke at the Veterans Day program, I saw him. Um, the sadness in the morning is something that we feel today and it is so deep. But here's the message that I share with all of us that I think is so important. We need more love in this world. We need more outreach in our communities. We need more respect and understanding for our fellow man and our youth. We as humanity are so misguided. We have lost our respect for ourselves. We've lost respect for the human spirit. We've lost hope in very troubled times. And I sit on the Public Health Committee and I understand the pleas more than ever for mental health awareness, for reaching out to those that have mental health issues. So we can save the souls that are taken or lost by a single hand of humanity, we lose so much. And all of that leaves this earth. But where does it start? It starts in our souls, in our spirits. The power of prayer is enormous. I offer that we pray more for ourselves and our communities and humanity ever than, more than ever. I offer to us that we reach out to those that are in need with love and a hand that says, you have help. We have a mental health crisis in this country. We have a mental health crisis in our youth, even in our adult population. But we cannot lose all hope. And we need those people that have these issues to have a place to go to get help. I commend all that we do and all that we say in this chamber. Help me. Help Colorado. Help all of us. To rebuild the soul and spirit of humanity in America so we stop the violence. Against all of us. Stop the violence and let's start loving one another and those that are in the deepest, darkest, disparaging moments in their lives. Somebody with a kind heart and a strong hand reaches out and says, come with me. I will take to you a place where there is light and love because you're in a dark place and you don't want to be there. 
because bad things happen in dark places. Thank you. Mm, Madam Majority Leader, Oscar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Like many of you, when we heard the news yesterday, <clears throat> we started thinking about who we know that could have been impacted. I instantly texted my aunt, my Aunt Heidi. My Uncle Mitch is a Boulder police officer. My text message simply was, is Mitch okay? And she said, he's safe but he's heartbroken. If we could put Officer Telly's picture up, please. He's heartbroken because he's on his way to Officer Telly's house to stand by with his wife and his seven kids. He'll be there all night. Had some, I tried to leave Mitch alone, let him be with who he needed to be with last night, so I was communicating much with my aunt. Officer Eric Telly was 51. He leaves behind his wife and seven children, and he's served Boulder since 2010. And I just want to share a few words from this morning from my uncle Mitch directly to you all. I told him we were going to be doing this, and I wanted to be able to honor Eric. From my Uncle Mitch, who was one of Eric's field training officers from the get-go and ended up being one of his very dear friends. These are his words. Eric was such a kind-hearted man who always stood up for the weak and would do anything for anyone. He was genuine, honest, and always concerned. He also lived to play games and introduced us to games that we had never heard of. My aunt told me that when, when they were on the swing shift together during their dinner breaks, Eric would often teach them new games. My uncle continues, he was such a tender soul. And if any of you were on Twitter at all, you probably heard the story of, of the Boulder stories and Boulder police officers a year or so back rescuing ducklings. Eric was one of those officers. My uncle continued, his energy was contagious. His love was exuberant. An amazing being that should not have been taken. And we know that there were nine other victims who all have stories from people who loved them to share. But I wanted to, Eric, I wanted to honor Eric today, Officer Telly but I also wanted to send my love to my uncle and his family who's mourning as well. Because when crimes like this happen, it's not just direct victims, it's friends, it's families, and it's communities that are impacted every single time this happens. And although I don't wanna stand silent, I wanna stand with you all in action in so many ways. I do want to give this body a moment of silence to think about not only the people we know, the people we don't know who are experiencing such loss today and unfortunately far too many other times in this world. So Mr. Speaker, I would ask for a moment of silence, please. Moment of silence is granted. Thank you, members. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'm gonna make quick committee announcements per the rules instead of uh, having uh, the chairs do